Welcome to Lecture Online and now we're going to take a look at the subatomic particles in more detail. So what we're doing here is again laying out the general structure of subatomic particles into two main categories. We have the elementary particles and we have the composite particles. The composite particles are made up of a number of elementary particles. So the elementary particles are the point particles that does, don't seem to have any internal structure. And of those elementary particles there's two main categories. We have the fermions we have the bosons. The fermions are subdivided into leptons and quarks and the bosons are basically the interchange and the intermediate particles, the particles that mediate the forces of the universe. And then the comp composite particles called hadrons are divided into two kinds, the baryons and the mesons. The baryons, they consist of three quarks and of course there's a, a number of ways in which you could put three quarks together. There's a total of six different quarks. And then we have the mesons are made up of one quark and one antiquark and there's many different ways in which you can form their four mesons. Now what I've done here is drawn on the board the most predominant, the most known, the most common uh, baryons and mesons. There's many, many, many more that are unstable that we could add to the list but that gets quite complicated. There's a very large combination, several hundred different combinations of baryons and mesons that can be made with the various quarks. But those are the ones that we're typically seeing in, in, uh, when we do experiments in laboratories, when we do experiments with accelerators. Those are the particles that tend to show up. So a little review here. Then on the leptons, of course, you already know that elect the electron is one of the six leptons. We have the electron, the muon, and the tau. Of those three particles, only the electron is stable. Muons and taus do not last very long. They disintegrate fairly quickly into a different particle. And then we have the corresponding what we call neutrino particles. There are three neutrino particles, one for each of the three leptons, electrons, muons, and tau. So we call that the electron neutrino, the muon neutrino, and the tau neutrino. This should be a U, by the way. It may not look like one, so there we go, like a U. And it turns out in the uh, production of uh, energy inside the sun, when the sun is fusing hydrogen to helium at the core of the sun, electron neutrinos are being produced. But what was strange was when we tried to detect those neutrinos, and they're very difficult to detect, so we had very elaborate experiments on the Earth to try and detect these neutrinos coming from the sun, it turned out we only saw one-third of all the neutrinos that we were expecting to see. And that was a big puzzle for decades until they figured out, oh, there's other kinds of neutrinos, and there must be transformation from one neutrino to the other on a continual basis, perhaps, and therefore we only see one-third of the neutrinos we're expecting to see. And so that was kind of an interesting story. Now also, uh, for every one of these six leptons, there are six antileptons. So instead of an electron, we have the positive electron, or called positron. We have the positive, positive muon and the positive tau. We also have the three antineutrinos, electron, muon, and tau antineutrinos, and they're indicated by putting a little line on top. So that means anti. In the case of a negatively charged lepton, the, the antiparticle is the positively charged uh, positron and positive muon and positive tau. We also indicated there are six quarks, the three that are very uh, familiar with, that are used in most of the, that are, uh, that we find, not that are used in, but that we find in most of the baryons are the up, the down, and the strange quarks. But there's also what we call a charm, a top, and a bottom quark. So there's a total of six different quarks, and for each quark there's an anti-quark, so there's the anti-up, the anti-down, the anti-strange, the anti-charm, the anti-top, and the anti-bottom. So there's still of six quarks and six anti-quarks. And then we have the bosons. We've gone through these before. The photon is the one that mediates the force between the, electro, the electromagnetic force. The bosons, the W and Z bosons, are, are the, um, the particles that mediate the weak force. The gluon is the particle that mediates the strong force. The Higgs boson creates the Higgs field that seems to be responsible for, for creating mass, give particles mass. And then we have the graviton that we haven't found yet, but that we theorize should be mediating the force of gravity. And then we have what we call the compo composite particles, they're called hadrons, and of those hadrons there's two different types, there's the baryons and there's the mesons. Now the baryons are made up of three quarks, and of course the proton and the neutron are the two baryons that, are most, that we're most familiar with. Those are the particles that make up the nuclei of all the atoms in the universe. The protons is made up of an up, an up, and a down quark. Now when you realize that the proton has a positive one charge, somehow 
two ups and a down must give us a positive one charge. It turns out that an up has a positive two-thirds charge, so plus two-thirds, plus two-thirds is four-thirds, and the down quark has a negative one-third charge, so plus four-thirds minus one-third gives exactly a plus one charge. Then a neutron is made up of an up and two downs. Notice the up is a positive two-thirds. Each of the downs is a negative one-third charge, so added together that gives you a neutral particle. So we didn't know that, that a neutron and a proton were made up of even smaller particles, but by doing some experimentation, we'll go into that in more, more detail in a later video, we realized that, hey, a neutron does seem to have uh, a magnetic response to electrons being, uh, being shot at neutrons and through neutrons at very high velocities and very high energies, and so therefore we knew there must be some charge allocation inside the neutron, and that's what gave us the idea that protons and neutrons had to be made up of even smaller particles. We also have the lambda particle made up of an up, a down, and a strange. Then we have three sigma particles, a positively charged, a neutral, and a negatively charged sigma. And so these are made up of up, up, strange, up, down, strange, and down, down, strange. And again, by knowing that these are positive, neutral, negative, we can figure out what the, uh, the electric charges of the strange uh, quark. So two ups, that gives us a positive four-thirds, and then therefore the strange must be a negative one-third, just like the down. So it looks like the strange and the down quark have the same negative one-third charge. Then we have the xi uh, particles. So these, these are made up of an up strange strange and a down strange strange. Again, since up is a positive two-thirds and each of the strange is minus one-third, that must be a neutral particle. And since each one of these is a negative one-third charge, that must therefore be a negative one charge particle. And then finally we have the omega, the neutral omega, which is made up of three uh, strange quarks. And then finally we go to the mesons. We've already seen the pion. Uh, that was the particle that uh, that Yukawa had discovered, and therefore we realized that that was an intermediary particle between uh, two uh, protons or two neutrons or, or the hadrons. And notice that these are, they're all made up of a quark and an antiquark, an antiquark and a quark. And here we have a very strange combination here, we'll get into the details later. But again, anytime you can see that we know that this has to be the makeup of the neutral pion because the disintegration releases two photons, which must be come from the destruction of the particle and, and, and associated antiparticle. So we knew that it had to be something like this, and some further experimentation confirmed that that was the makeup of a neutral pion. We also have the kaon. Here the kaon is made up of a, an up and a anti-strange, a down and anti-strange, and an anti-up and a strange particle. Those make the three kaons. And now we have the eta particles. Again, they have kind of a similar arrangement as the zero, as a, the uh, neutral pion. This is called the eta, and this is called the eta prime. And those particles, of course, have a much more complicated makeup. And when they disintegrate, they do show that this has to be the makeup of those particles before disintegration. These are all unstable particles as well as all of these. Those particles only last for a very small fraction of a second before they disintegrate into something different. But at least they make up the matter universe, and of course these make up the stable matter, and everything else makes up the, what we call the temporary matter of the universe, so to speak. And that gives you a very nice picture, a little bit more detail, about the various different kinds of particles and how they are classified. And then we'll, in later videos we'll show you some more detail about how we uh, give them certain properties of, uh, uh, so they have, they hold certain properties by which we understand how they interact with each other. So based on interaction and experimentation, we began to assign specific properties to these to have them make more sense to us. And so if you're interested, stay tuned and we'll show you some additional videos.